Tell me when, Bruce. Good, good morning, and welcome to St. Peter's United Church of Christ. We're glad you could be with us for this, uh, this third Sunday in Advent. I just have one announcement to bring up. Uh, if you are planning on coming to Christmas Eve services, which we're having at 3, 6, and 9, please, please, please remember, you need to call ahead and make reservations. I know that sounds really silly, but we're trying to do everything we can to maintain a safe place here for the folks that'll be worshiping. 50 people maximum, people, not families, not units, 50 people maximum for each of the worship services. Uh, at three o'clock, we already have 41. So if you're interested in that one, you better call quickly. At 6 p.m., we have 15, and at 9 p.m., we have 12. So plenty of time for, uh, for the late services. And at 6 and at 9 service, uh, we'll be joined by David Forsman, uh, who will be sharing his uh, gift of music on the cello with us during those services. All the services will have the candle lighting while we sing, uh, while we sing Christmas, uh, excuse, excuse me, Silent Night, so you won't need to worry about that. So what if we live in a constant preparation for something to happen? What if we truly believe God's reign of justice will come.
As we gather around the Advent wreath today, we rejoice that Christmas is a time of prayer and of open hearts when we sing songs of joy. Christmas is a time of worship, the moment when the busiest of us pause in wonder. Christmas happens when God comes to us in love through Jesus Christ and fills us with love for all humankind. From the Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them all well, he asked Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, this is the first. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Today we relight the candles of hope and peace and light the candle of love to proclaim the coming of the light of God into this world. With the coming of this light, there is love. Such great love helps us to love God and to love one another. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you that Jesus showed your love for every person, babies and children, old people and young, sick people and those who were strong, rich people and those who were poor. Come to us in this Advent season and give us love in our hearts for you, for all humanity, and for all your glorious creation. Amen.
our morning prayer. Spirit of God, we give you thanks for drawing near, for touching the world in the Savior's birth. Help us draw near to you as we prepare our hearts and our world for the justice and peace you bring. Guide our preparations for Christmas as we share the good news with those who suffer and as we offer our friendship to those who are alone. Move within our hearts as we make way for your coming by forgiving others as we have been forgiven. Come, Spirit of God, be born in us anew, that we may live in your mercy and your grace. Amen. Come to the time in our service of worship where we have the opportunity to, to lift up and to share with each other the concerns and the joys of our hearts and our lives at this time. I have a number of, uh, of prayer requests uh, first, Dave Dutro, our brother Dave Dutro, has been working diligently to get the bells working again, and he, he got them all set. They're working great. They, they even play music so we can hear singing for the Christmas season. It's wonderful. He was getting ready to finish up things and was carrying uh, the part that didn't work anymore down to take to recycle. He tripped on the stairs here and broke his ankle in a number of places. Kathy took him to the hospital, uh, he was admitted, and then had surgery to, uh, to put some pins in so that it can, uh, can heal well. He's gonna be out of commission for about six weeks and that uh, I know how hard that's gonna be on him and on Kathy, having him around for six weeks, not being able to move and get around. So I wanna keep Dave and Kathy in our thoughts and prayers as, as they go through this time. Uh, and prayers for Kathy to have the strength to, to minister to Dave and that Dave listened to Kathy because, well, that Dave listens to Kathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. That we continue to lift up in our prayer Cheryl Howard, uh, who broke her leg a few weeks ago and also required surgery. Uh, Cheryl's on the mend and uh, we'll just wanna keep her in our thoughts and prayers. And Terry, uh, Terry White, uh, as he ministers to her and takes care of her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, that we lift up Patty Allen. Uh, Patty is, is back home with Bob, uh, yet still really struggling and, and having some problems. Uh, members of the congregation have been taking meals over to them uh, twice a week so then they can uh, know that they'll have food there and, and trying to get Patty to eat is really one of the most important things. So I want to keep, uh, keep Patty and Bob and, and the whole family in our, our thoughts and prayers as they go through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, that we remember our members and friends of St. Peter's that are currently dealing, uh, getting over COVID-19. Uh, Marianne Morrison and her friend Don, Penny Scaletta, Karen Shiner and her husband, the Rinkies, Wendy and Jim, Gail Roy's son, Mark, Don Porter's husband, Mike, and that we remember and recognize and anguish over the fact that yesterday uh, we lost over 3,100 souls to the virus. Um, it said that it was one, one American died every 28 seconds. We we'll want to keep the families of those that lost loved ones in our thoughts and prayers, especially during this, during this holiday season when it is just, just even harder. That we keep in our thoughts and prayers those that are dealing with the illness, either in the hospital or at home. And that we say a special prayer for the nurses and the doctors, the hospital staff. Uh, we use the word hero all excuse me, all the time, and sometimes it kind of loses its, its real meaning, but these people truly are heroes, uh, angels of, of God, as they put themselves in harm's way, as they sacrifice 
times with their family as they, they work to the point of exhaustion to do all that they can to, uh, to help the folks that, uh, that have been afflicted by this virus. We pray that, that the vaccine will be successful. We pray that it will be able to be, uh, be sent out as quickly as possible and that we can, can begin to get a hold of this virus and, uh, well, and get our nation and get our world back uh, as close as we possibly can to the way that it was before. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. A joy at the village meeting on Monday, it was unanimously approved that St. Peter's United Church of Christ was designated the first historic landmark, the village of Frankfurt. So this is a, a real honor for our, our congregation, for those that came before us, uh, and those that are a part of the family now. And, and I know we have done it before, but once again, I want to really stress our thanks and appreciation to Marsha Stewart. Marsha is on the uh, uh, committee, the historical committee for Frankfurt. Uh, she was the one that got the ball rolling and worked with that committee, who then brought it to the village, who then approved it. Uh, so to Marsha for all her work, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to when we will be able to, to accept this honor and this award, uh, and, and hopefully be able to have a really special service around that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, a special little, little note, a special little thought. The world sucks right now. I know I'm going to get in trouble, but there's only three people here, and I can take them. Things seem to be falling apart. Uh, the virus, uh, the climate, the political climate that, that we have. Churches have been, have been closed down so that folks cannot come to, to worship together in, in person. And while I, 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 I know you all appreciate our efforts to be able to bring it to you, it's, it's just not the same, at least not the same for me. It is, it is so easy for us to, to walk around and get mired in the, in the malaise that is enveloping all of us. And I hear people talking about, well, this Christmas just isn't very good and this Christmas is Okay, this Christmas is not the same, but Lent wasn't the same and Easter wasn't the same. And since, what was it, March 17th, I think when we closed down, it hasn't been the same. But what we need to remember, we that profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we that commit our lives to serving the living God, we need to really remember and to share with the world in darkness the light of this season. Quite frankly, and I truly don't mean to offend anybody, it doesn't matter if if families can't get together the way they're used to. It doesn't matter if we can't go shopping looking for that perfect gift the way that we used to. It truly doesn't really even matter that we can't get together with a church full of people and choirs and candles and singing and celebration the way we used to. What we need to realize is what Christmas is that the season of Christmas is one of, of hope and peace and love and joy. It's, it's the celebration of the birth of our Savior, the one that we have all committed our lives to serving as best and as faithfully as we can. Now, I am not naive, and I, I myself quite often fall, fall victim to just feeling very bad and sorry for myself. But we need to realize that the world goes on, the world will go on. And it is up to us, it is essential for us to take this spirit, this joy, this peace, this love and hope of Christmas out there into a world that's searching. We know there are problems, but we know with complete certainty what the answer is. And the answer came to humanity in the birth of that small child, in that lowly stable, in that, 
that insignificant town of Bethlehem. So, so let us give our gift to the world. And that's the gift of celebration and of joy and of love in the midst of all that's happening today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So now for, for these concerns and these joys that we have shared together, for the concerns and the joys that, that each one of you watching I know have in your hearts and, and have taken to God, I invite us now to be in a time and a spirit of prayer. O oh, holy and ever-present God, we give you thanks for this, for this day, for this morning, for the clear blue skies, the crisp air, the privilege to, to come together, to join our hearts and our voices in, in songs of praise and thanks to you. God, we ask, we ask that, that we be open, each and every one of us, to the presence of your Holy Spirit in our lives, in our hearts, and in our spirits. That we look, that we look upon the world, that, that we are not Pollyannish, that we are not naive, that we are not overly optimistic that we see the problems that we, that we are having in our nation and in our world. And we realize, we accept the responsibility that we have taken on for ourselves through our baptism and our proclamation of faith. Faith in you, and in the risen Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We pray that we might be able to go out into a world of darkness and to share the light of, of our small candles within us. That we go forth with joy in our hearts Joy for this season of Advent. Joy for, for what we know is coming in the birth of, of your Son, our Savior. That we go forth with, with a spirit of peace. A peace and calm that, that allows us to, to hear other voices to hear other ideas, to hear other opinions, to listen, to respect, to be in, in dialogue and, and not in conflict. We pray for your peace in our hearts that allows us to go out into the world trying to help to bring people together. To see the many, many, many ways that we are so similar while still accepting and respecting the differences that we have, but not allowing them to tear us apart. Rather, allowing them to, as a people, to make those differences help us to be stronger. 
We pray for the spirit of love. The love that, that came down at Christmas through the birth of Christ Jesus. We pray that we, that we, can, that we can love everybody. Not always agreeing. Not always liking what people are doing. Not giving folks a, a free pass to act however they will. To hold others and especially ourselves accountable. But to look at people as individuals. To try to imagine the lives that they are living. Trying to imagine what happened in their past. Trying to understand why some folks act in such a mean and contrary way. But that we, we strive to understand, to love, to encourage, rather than to, to belittle. And we pray that we might have the strength to go out into this, this world right now of madness and to shout at the top of our lungs and more importantly, through the choices of our lives, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let us realize that that our happiness, our joy, comes from places that, well, that is above the world. That we are called to, well, we're called to a higher calling. That we, each and every one of us, are called to be your presence and to share your light in a world in darkness. Quite simply, each and every one of us, might we accept our call to be Emmanuel, to be God's presence. Presence in and for a world that is searching. O oh, Holy One, we lift this prayer up to you this morning as we have shared with you our concerns and our joys. And we bring them all to you when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, 
They will be called the oaks of righteousness, the plantings of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build upon the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offsprings among all the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what it's sown in it to be sprung up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. that God is still speaking. Well, if you've been with us for the first two Sundays of Advent, you hopefully note that, that the passage from Isaiah today, they all seem to be fitting the same, the same theme, making sure we understand that we are not, we're not called just to sit here and wait for God. We are, not, we are not called to just sit and wonder and be in awe as God brings goodness and righteousness into the world. By the covenant that God made with, with us, each and every one of us, at the moment of creation, when he brought humanity into being, it was to be in a special relationship with God and with each other. God created us to be co-creators. And God gave us free will to decide whether or not we will accept that call. And if we accept that call, then how we will live it. For just as the prophet Isaiah says, begins this all with the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Each and every one of us can look at ourselves and say the spirit of God is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's what we are called to do. And that's what Advent is about. It's a time set apart at the very beginning of the liturgical year. It starts with the first Sunday in Advent. We are called to use this time, these, these four Sundays before Christmas, to hear the words of the prophets, to hear the words that God has laid down upon their hearts, and to put ourselves in the place of those prophets. To realize that God did not just anoint Isaiah and say, okay, Go with God, or I guess God would say, go with me. That proclamation, that, that anointing 
while Isaiah talked about it in his particular case, we, we need to understand that these words are speaking to each and every one of us. And I dare say, right now, it's as important as it has ever been for, under, for us to understand these words, words and then strive to faithfully live them. As we've already talked this morning, the world seems to be in a very dire place. There are, there are so many people that are oppressed, that are broken hearted, that are, that are broken people, that are captive. And, and not just captive as in a prisoner locked up behind bars or exiled, but captive to the, to the events that we find ourselves living in in our, our world today. We feel like we're captive and there's nothing we can do about it. Between the pandemic, the fires and floods that are still happening, and especially for us in the United States of America, the political climate in which we find ourselves, it's so easy just to throw up our hands and say, I got nothing to do with this. I'm a prisoner of what everybody else does and all I can do is float along with it and complain and moan and, I almost said it but I caught myself, and just give up. But we need to remember that spirit of God that has that is upon us, the Spirit of God that has anointed us. We have, we have within us individually the gifts of the Spirit well, to be able to help folks that feel oppressed, that feel broken, that feel captive. We have within us the gifts of the Spirit to reach out to the marginalized, the people that society has cast off to the side, and those even further out that, that society just doesn't even talk about or recognize. So that's what was happening in the times of the prophet Isaiah. And the same things are happening today. Isaiah, as, as one example in the prophets of, of the Hebrew scripture, he accepted that call. He accepted that, that mantle laid upon him. He heard and resonated with the words that God laid upon his heart. And he spoke these words of hope and of comfort to a people that were in exile, a people whose nation had been completely destroyed and pillaged and raped. Now, did it change anything? Well, quite frankly, at that moment in time, no, it really didn't change a lot. They were still in exile. Their land was still devastated. But Isaiah knew through the call that God had, had given him that his, his message that he was called to give was one of hope. Yes, things are bad. But, but, things will get better. They always, always have. What we need to do is have faith. What we need to do is accept 
that we have a, albeit small part, but we have a part in reconciling the world, to bringing together humanity with each other, and then reinstilling humanity in our covenant with God. We need to realize that, that we are not necessarily called to go out and change the world tomorrow. The season of Advent calls for us to change ourselves. The season of Advent calls for us to reflect upon our lives, to reflect upon our choices. And each and every liturgical year, Advent gives us the opportunity to recommit ourselves. To be ready for, for that event which changed all of, all of history. To trying to decide how we will respond to that change. And how we will reflect our faith, our trust in God. The season of Advent is about each and every one of us looking at ourselves and then looking at our little part of the world and trying to decide how best we can live lives of faithful service, how we can live lives of love for God, understanding that Jesus told us that the only way we can truly show our love for God is by loving our neighbor, by loving everybody else. The season of Advent gives us the opportunity then to begin to look for those small ways that we can share our love, our understanding, our commitment to, to striving to be faithful disciples of the risen Christ. It can start in our families. It can start in our neighborhood. It can start where we work. But see, the key in all of these things, the first two Sundays of Advent when we heard the words of the prophet Isaiah and the words today, start. See, we're getting closer and closer to Christmas when that, that commitment then becomes real because the birth of that child has occurred. So we have to start. We have to start preparing ourselves, preparing the way, preparing the way for the Lord in our hearts, in our souls, and in our very beings, and preparing ourselves for the way we will go out and share that spirit of God that we have. All of us, every one of us, we have been anointed. We have been sent to bring good news, to bring hope, to bring peace, to bring love, to bring joy, to bring Christ to a world so sorely in need right now. So let us, as we continue our Advent journey, find ways to prepare ourselves, to prepare our hearts to be heralds, to go out to proclaim to the world, I bring good news of great joy. Amen. Now we'll hear, O little town of Bethlehem.
At this time of year, the abundance of some and the needs of so many stand in marked contrast. As we bring now our tithes and our offerings, may Christ's heart rejoice and the needs of others be tended. Praise God from whom pray. Generous God, your love renews us and restores our strength. With gratitude, we offer you a portion of what you have given to us. Receive our gifts, our prayers, and our service that your church may become a source of hope for the world. Amen. Now we'll hear angels we have heard on high. Oh, 
now our commission for this week. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us, anointing us to bring hope, and peace, and love and joy to all people. Let us go and prepare the way of the Lord. Now may the God of love call forth your complete dedication. May the light of Christ shine upon you and the Holy Spirit fill you completely, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>